Hey guys, Peter from the Salvation Army, just back again to talk to you about disciple making and uh, wanting to break down how simple it actually is. So at the moment we're going through Luke chapter 10 and we got up to verse 8. Having a look at verse 8, it says, Whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. Now that's an interesting thing. Why do you think Jesus would ask us to eat and drink what's set before us? Have a think about it. For me, I think it's a basic human dignity principle. So Jesus says when you go vulnerable into their community and you eat their food and you drink their food, their drinks, and you drink their drinks, then you are showing them that what they have to offer us is good enough. What they have provided for us was good. We are saying to them that we care about you. We love you and we value the way you are treating us. Now, if you think about some of those people of peace who may not have been the nicest people or may have had a rough life, may never treated with dignity and respect, it actually has a massive impact. I went to a drug addict's house once and I was told by the worker that went with me because I went to make a video actually. I went to, the, went to the house and it was almost like a textbook lesson because the worker said to me, don't don't eat and drink the food that he's got there. Like the house is not great. So I said, okay, no worries. Went into the house and then the, wor the, um, the worker sat one side of me and I sat this side and the client said, would you like a drink? And I went, sure, I would love a drink. Thanks, whatever you have, I would love a drink. And it's <laughs> good. So he gets off to make the drink and she nudges me saying, I just told you not to. I said, I know, I'm sorry, but I'm, the Bible tells me I should eat and drink what people give me. She goes, but you might catch something. I said, I might, but I, it's just, I'm doing what Jesus tells me. So he comes back into the room and, um, what, and then he says, would you like a biscuit too? I'm like, sure, I'd love a biscuit. <laughs> and the lady's like, oh, seriously, you don't listen. I said, well, I am listening to my father and he says, my heavenly father, he says, to, to eat and drink. So anyway, he comes back in with the tea and the coffee, uh, the tea and the biscuit. Who do you think he puts his attention on? Yeah, me. He was looking straight at me because I had accepted his hospitality. I had trusted him enough to eat and drink what he had given me. I mean, he probably would know that I probably would have said no, but I, I showed him a different reality. And then, and the, it was just a great textbook exercise to prove that when even in vulnerable situations where we could potentially get hurt or we could potentially catch something, um, to actually accept people's hospitality is miraculous. Miraculous. Like in, in the connection that it forms. So that's something that you should keep in mind. Listen to God and do what he says is always the key. Because in verse 9 it says, And heal the sick there, and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. Now, just going back to that man, do you think he experienced healing? I'd say, yes, he did. He experienced dignity. He experienced love. And in that moment, he experiences peace. So as we accept their hospitality, we are even healing them. But we can also say, I want to pray God's blessing on you. And, and as we build up um, a you know, relationship in that context, we can pray for him for so many different things and point him to God. And pr by praying, it actually confronts and says that the kingdom of God is near. You don't have to say, the kingdom of God is near, because it says so in the text. You can confront them by saying, oh, can I pray for you? That's saying that the kingdom of God is near. It's like not really a weird thing to do. It's actually a nice thing to do. I mean, it's weird and that's not usual, but it's not strange but whatever city you enter and they do not receive you go out into the streets and say the very dust of your city which clings to us we wipe off against you 
Nevertheless, know this, but the kingdom of God has come near you. But I say to you that it will be more tolerable in the day of Sodom than for that city. Now, this is a pretty harsh verse. So Jesus has said, when you go into a town and if someone doesn't welcome you, or if someone starts to manipulate you, if someone starts to corrupt you, or someone's not really wanting to get to know Jesus, but they're just wanting to mess around with you and muck you up and make get personal gain or something like that, or hurt you, then it says to move on. Wipe the dust on your feet and move on. Break the relationship, break the tie and move away. Now that doesn't mean it's forever. You're just saying, I'm done for now. I'm not going to tolerate this. And it could be that I just distance myself. I move, remove myself. I don't go stand there and say, woe to you, you are going to hell, which actually I'd say many Christians have done to me because we've been following this process. The Holy Spirit not to told, told me not to talk to you because there's a lot of spiritual abuse that can go on. So I'm, I'm not here to abuse other people. I'm simply going to withdraw and move away from those people distance myself relationally but that doesn't mean i'm not going to build a relationship with them and if i see those people i'm going to be happy i like smiling with them and kind with them and genuine with them but i'm not going to put my effort oh, a lot of my effort into that relationship because they will just immerse you with their own agenda and that's not always great we, we want people that actually are open to our relationship open to what god is doing and they want to be well. They want to be healed. They want to be restored. And we sow with everyone. As I said, we love everyone. We care for everyone. We just don't invest heavily in people unless they are people of peace. Rightio. So Jesus then goes on this little rant in verse 13 and says, Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And for Capernaum, who exalted to heaven, you, who are exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades. He who hears you, hears me. He who rejects you, rejects me. And he who rejects me, rejects him who sent me. Now this is the important part. If we are going vulnerable, trusting the Holy Spirit, and genuinely building relationships with people. He who hears me, hears the Father. He who rejects me as a human being is rejecting Jesus. And he who rejects me, rejects the one who sent me, God the Father. Now, it's a fascinating text. We don't ever rub people's faces in that, but it shows how important this mission is to Jesus. He's like, if you don't want to be part of this, I've come out of my way to show you that I love you. I've sent people into community to build relationships with you, and it may just not be the right time at the moment. Someone else may need to come and do that. Someone else later must need to come and fill the gap. But for this time, he's ba Jesus is basically saying to us, don't waste your time here move on to the next relationship which is harsh it doesn't mean you close the door forever it just means for now you don't invest in that area so when the G when the disciples in verse 17 when the, dis the disciples actually did what jesus asked of them the 70 returned with joy saying lord even the demons are subject to us in your name so obviously the, the disciples had experienced God work in such a powerful way that they were able to do what Jesus was doing. The demons submitted to them. That is, darkness fled. That is, people were healed. People were restored. Community was restored. Lives were changed. People were given opportunity that they perhaps were never had before to change their life around. Because of these unknown people that were sent by Jesus, because God was doing all the work. And he said to them, Jesus said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. <sighs> Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and, all, and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, if you're not feeling it yet, uh, we have a real strong boldness. 
not an arrogance. There's a boldness in knowing that where we are right now is the right place to, that where God wants us. I don't think too much of myself. I don't think too little of myself. I'm confident because I am who God says I am. And I am confident to be his witness because of him in me. And so Jesus gives us the authority, gives us the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. You know, we could just take that as, as dangerous creatures, but dangerous powers, dangerous uh, situations. He gives us the authority over them and actually will build and restore community by using us. That's the Holy Spirit working in us. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, it says in verse 20, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So even though we have all this authority, even though we have all this power, that is not what we rejoice in. We rejoice in that we get to be with Jesus forever. We get to be in relationship with Jesus forever. We get to be part of his family forever and his saints forever and we get to be restored forever that is the beauty for me so i just wanted to share that's a, a quick summary of luke chapter 10 you probably got loads of questions and uh, if i've offended you somewhere along the line i apologize it would not be my aim to offend you but uh, some of these texts in there wrestling with these texts can can uh, offend people's theological view you know in the salvation army there was a view that you know we go for souls, go for the worst, go for the whosoever, and that means anyone. And we do go for anyone and, and care for anyone. But the Bible says we should actually specifically go for people of peace. Go for those people who want to build relationships. But of course, you don't actually find the people of peace until you go through everyone and find the people of unpeace. So it does kind of fit. We do go for everyone, but at the same time, we, we invest heavily in the people of peace. And I think that's good news for many pastors out there who have stuck with people, trying to win people back, trying to get people's favour, who have been bribed because of tithing or being said, I've got the power and I'm going to control and manipulate you. Oh, that's not a person of peace. Um, yeah. So there's lots of questions that would arise out of this, but feel free to comment. Feel free to, to contact me and... Um, I'm not the guru on this. Jesus is the guru and there's lots of other great people. And I can connect you to uh, some my mentors, if you like. And uh, they're on Facebook, Neil Cole and Peter Reinfeld. Uh, they're worth checking out and um, connecting with as well because you can ask them anything. But just remember, you can ask God and he will equip you as well. And more often than not, the answer that you're looking for is already inside you because the Holy Spirit is leading you and guiding you. But we do need help and we do need confidence. And having that community of support is a wonderful avenue for that. So the Salvo Missional Space in Facebook is a great space for you to hang out if you want to be part of that. And if you're not on Facebook, then um, just contact either through YouTube here or um, yeah, any other. Um, you can email. You can email. It's peter.hobbs. Well, there's the email. You can email there. And yeah, once you've emailed, we can make contact. And I uh, look forward to chatting with you soon. Hopefully this is helpful, but hopefully you can start to see that all the pressure of ministry goes off our shoulders because it's not our work. It's God's work. We're just called to go and do what he says. And that is quite simple when we learn to listen to his voice. Bless you guys. Speak to you soon.